Welcome to A Talk With Talk. It's me, your boy, your host, OD, and today we'll be reviewing and analyzing chapter 1075 of One Piece. If this is your first time on this channel or you've been here before but haven't done so already, would greatly appreciate it if you could like, share, and subscribe. Bang that bell would mean the absolute world to me. Anyway, without much further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone. Chapter 1075 of One Piece Labo Stratum Death Game. So, once again, I don't want this to sound like One Piece is not good right now. It's still great, but we are at my least favorite part, and that is the setups and the lulls. Am I saying the setups and lulls are bad? Absolutely not. What I'm saying, though, is there's a lot of things I want to get to and a lot of answers I want. And now we are being basically told to wait a little bit. And honestly, I just kind of feel and sound like a spoiled brat because, you know, the entire Egghead mini arc has been so fast. has been so fast, full of exposition and reveals. And now, like, for the first, like, two weeks in a row, we're not getting, you know, exposition and reveals. I'm like... Give me exposition and reveals. So I totally get it. But regardless, it's just how I feel. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's only a problem when you read week to week like I do. Um, back in the day when I used to like allow the chapters to uh, build up, you know, it was these chapters like this were never an issue and honestly helped to make what it's building up to that much more significant, that much more enjoyable. However, when you're slodging through week to week, things like this can be almost unbearable because a lot happened, but nothing happened. So we start off this chapter and basically chaos has ensued. Uh, we lost track of Pythagoras. Uh, Luffy can't hear him on his headset. Originally, when I read this chapter, I was super confused. Like, because I was like, I thought he meant he couldn't hear the voice of Vegapunk satellites as if they died and I was super scared, but no, it just seems like the little like radio transceiver antenna headset thing they have allows them all to communicate with each other, or at least that's what I assume. Oh, by the way, I didn't talk about the cover story, but it's a picture of a uh, Vegapunk. He looks quite young here, really young. This is probably around the time that uh, Jay Garcia Sadden remembers Vegapunk and Vegapunk got to meet say the five elders so i can't wait for i don't know if we'll actually get a flashback about that but i'm very curious you know what they talked about how they treated him how he treated them but so that should be really interesting. also something i wanted to clarify asap was last chapter review i said something along the lines of uh uchi and kaku were uh pretending to be passed out and they were talking i'm an idiot that was clearly after reread after rereading and like sending that out that was clearly luffy and zoro i don't know what was going on uh I, maybe i was in a hurry to release the chapter review or like it was an issue with the quality of the uh scans which by the way i could have done this review yesterday but honestly i'm a big fan of tc i prefer their translation so even if it means waiting one more day and not being the first to the punch i think i'm just gonna because i love the way those guys do their trans yeah I was completely wrong. It wasn't uh, Luchi and Kaku, like, uh, or at least Luchi talking in his throat and uh, Luffy talking out loud the entire time. I want to clarify that. So anyway, we cut over to Edison and Nami, and Nami has found the amazing jewels, and they turn out to be diamonds. Ask Edison if you have them. Edison's like, are you crazy? Most people just say they're nice. You want to take them? And Nami... It's a really fair point, and she says, "Hey, aren't we evacuating Egghead Island anyway? So might as well take them." And I love the fact that she never quite got like permission, or like Edison never said yes. And you already see her with the uh, jewelry like loaded up on her backpack, ready to go. And I just love it. I love the fact that we're getting classic Nami. We haven't seen like uh, jewel thief, cat thief Nami in quite some time. We've seen her be stingy with money and stuff, but we haven't seen aspect of her in quite some time so i was really really excited to see it i thought it was 
cool. Thought it was hilarious. Also, I like the uh, I I like the idea that you know there was some kind of lock on the jewels. I mean, I don't really see there being a point like who's gonna really steal it. The they're all stuck on an island, and you know I'm sure that these scientists there are you know trusted by Vegapunk. But I just personally like to think that it was like locked, and like Nami used her like at the lock picking skills to like just get in there, get out really quickly. Also, something that like maybe no one else thought about and wasn't a big deal to anyone else but me i just couldn't help but think the last major time we got a boatload of like money or, or what have you wealth was skype i asked a friend of mine he says that i says that he believes we got some gold in press rosa but i don't remember but all all that is to say wouldn't it be the last what happened the last time the straw hats got an abundance of wealth they bought the best Shit money could buy uh they got the sunny uh made by frankie made you adam wood right so i'm wondering you know maybe because of these diamonds that nami found if they're going to be able to upgrade the sunny or be able to make some other giant purchase that's going to benefit them in the right or at least help you know luffy obtain some form of you know wealth or money um as you know a yonko right so that would be really cool. also these diamonds are man-made so i'm wondering if you know we're gonna find out you know how to create man-made diamonds right or if you know they're gonna hold the value of you know natural diamonds so i think there's a lot more that to the eye with this scene that then is what's being revealed we run into atlas She's looking good. Apparently, you know, they have replaceable parts for her and her face is essentially a mask. So, you know, it can be swapped out and replaced. So that was really good to see. Now we have Luffy meeting up with Shaka, which everyone at this point pretty much believes Shaka to be a traitor. At this point, I don't know. I'm just in it for the story. Whatever Oda reveals, Oda reveals. Personally, I don't really want there to be a traitor. It doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, you know, Everyone thought it was Lilith because Lilith was, uh, you know, is the obvious choice. She's the evil Vegapunk. But, like, what does that mean in terms of being evil, right? And also, it would be a really cool subversion because the first time we meet Lilith, she's trying to screw over the Straw Hats. And Shaka's the one that tells her to stop. So, it would be kind of a subversion if, you know, Shaka's the one doing all this stuff and Lilith is the one that ends up helping them, right? Who knows, but... Also, speaking of Vegapunk, something that I wanted to, um, that I thought about, uh, was the fact that, you know, I've been saying for quite some time now that Vegapunk seems to be very naive. Yes, he seems to have a naivety about him, naivete about him, and, um, I'm, and it started making me think about the atomic bomb, right? And even though that was, you know, uh, Oppenheimer, uh, was the one that created the atomic bomb, a lot of people, for some reason, often bring up Albert Einstein. And the reason Albert Einstein is often associated with uh, the atomic bomb, minus the fact that he penned a letter saying, hey, don't do this, this is a bad idea, um, is because I think his uh, most famous formula equals MC squared was a component in uh, the creation of the atomic bomb. And so one thing we've learned throughout the entirety of this is, especially with like people like Tom, Sometimes your creations are used. Now, are the creations themselves bad? No, but how they're utilized can often be bad. And so I really do think that maybe it might be a situation where just naive as Vegapunk has been up until now, he's going to invent something, whether it be the Seraphim, whether it be satellites, something he invented is going to cause great turmoil. And I think it's going to be a good. Uh, that's the position between him winning um winning winning the nobel peace prize or whatever the version of the one piece world's nobel peace prize that he won was and you know his one of his creations heavily giant threat to the world. we'll see so anyway luffy run uh luffy runs into shaka he's like hey i can't hear anyone uh shaka's like check out the cameras we're seeing the cameras cutting out and on one camera before it cuts out we see like brainy image reaching for the camera we don't know who it is it could be shaka bullshitting it could be honestly i just want it to simply be, um what's that dude 
Swamp Swamp Fruit. I can't remember his name at the moment. Caribou. It could be Caribou, right? So there's a lot of things at work here. At this point, I'm not even playing the guessing game. Um, it just doesn't matter to me who it is. Uh, Egghead has been awesome. It doesn't seem like we're going to get much exposition anymore outside of uh, what's happening with Kuma. I'm really waiting for Kazaru and, you know, Jay, uh, Jay Garcia Saturn to get here. Like, I just, I just really want to, like, see Kazaru. Um, actually, you know what? I want to talk about Kazaru, but before I get there, let me just wrap up this, like, uh, this chapter. Because, honestly, I'm going to be real with you. Not a lot really happens. And when I say that, I know that there's people that's going to get on my ass and be like, what are you talking about? And, like, yes, I know that there are, there are things happening, but, like, uh, not, not in the way I want, right? And so, anyway... Uh, after we see that scene with, you know, whoever that mysterious person is, we go over, we have Sanji, we have Stussy, and we have Jinbei, and they're all looking around. Sanji's being a simp. Honestly, it's a little bit cringy, but whatever. It's Sanji. used to it at this point. And then we go over to the third, um, the third building, because for some reason, you know, the shot has decided to do a Scooby-Doo and split up, which we know is, like, a terrible idea, but what have you. And, um, you know, Usopp is with uh, Lilith and York and Frankie, right? Now, York um, sees the explosion. They run into Pythagoras. At first, they're freaking out. But as we saw earlier, Pythagoras has the ability to you know, remove his head from his body. So he's fine. But I don't think he knows exactly what happened. He knows that there was an explosion, right? And so while they're, like, talking to Pythagoras, we see the Boa Hancock Seraphim show up. And York goes over to her and is like, oh, you're adorable. And also, didn't I hear Edison tell you to stand down? And uh, makes fun, um, and copies his, like, old-timey voice, right? And unfortunately, for whatever reason, the Seraphim attack York and turn her, well, not Seraphim, a Boa Hancock Seraphim attacks York and turns her stone. Now, can someone in the comments please let me know what happened here? Because he does a explosion laser beam, and I am not positive, but I feel like she exploded the petrified York. Now, that doesn't really seem like something Odo would do, but like, I don't know. We never see York again from that point, so it's a big possibility, in my opinion. That would be really hardcore if that were to happen. So, anyway. Now we have now we finally understand what was going on with uh you know the student thing where if you have the same command level it can't be overridden. I thought it was simply because set up for you know a, the Gorosei showing up and you know, taking taking control over the Seraphim again, but no, it does not seem to be the case. Uh it's it seems like Oda is implying that once again one of the satellites is a saboteur or maybe vegapunk himself is um a saboteur also speaking of vegapunk i am under the impression that he has this level of um called administration as the rest of the satellites because when we were looking at that hierarchy thing it had vegapunk plus the like satellites so who knows once again if you have an idea if you have better explanation please let me know in the comments by the way this is so stupid. If Vegapunk doesn't have some kind of backdoor prime directive emergency like op um, proto like override protocol, he is an idiot. I don't care how naive he is. He is an actual moron. Like there's no way he gave actual control to Gorosai unless 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 for some way for some reason, when they met, he, like, gained a modicum of respect and understanding for, like, what they do and why they do it. I don't know. I still think that's terrible, though. But I don't know. I, it could be anything could be going on right now. I have my speculation. Honestly, the simplest thing, in my opinion, is when Bonnie went into all memory uh, bubble, uh, Caribou found Vegapunk, was like, hey. The smartest man on the earth, yeah, he would be a great hostage. Decides to take him into the swamp, swamp. Probably took a bunch of Vegapunk's gadgets. 
Now he has the world's smartest man. He also has um, a bunch of, uh, you know, futuristic tech. And he also has the knowledge of the weapons to take back to whoever it is. And it could, once again, Blackbeard, or it could be some other giant threat. So that's honestly what I thought happened, what I think happened. But we, we know how Oda operates at right? So honestly, that's pretty much the extent of the chapter, right? Like, that's the extent of the chapter. We see uh, the Seraphim show up uh, where Luffy and Zoro and Shaka are. It's the Mihawk Seraphim and the uh, Kuma Seraphim. And, you know, it's time to fight. Uh, Luchi and Kaku are like, Antaeus will help you. And then we get a hilarious reaction panel of Luffy and Zoro making the busted. Like, gotta be kidding me. I wouldn't trust it either, but honestly, the enemy of my enemy is my friend type thing. So maybe they'll go for it. Um, as far as Kazaru, I can't wait for him to show up. I can't wait to see him fight. Honestly, I really hope that he has official orders that he has to take. Every time we've seen Kazaru for some reason or the other, there's a bullshit reason why he doesn't finish the job. And honestly, it's kind of painted him in a bad light. Like, it's obvious he's powerful because he's an admiral, and it's obvious he's powerful because he has the light belt. I cannot imagine that being. Um, something I wanted to talk about before I ended this review was the fact that ever since the, uh, the introduction of Kazaru, he has been the number one admiral that I have most been. Everyone always talks about Akainu and Aoki, but Kazaru was the one for me. He was mysterious, and it always bothered me how, like, how someone who, in my opinion, has one of the strongest abilities in all of, like, fiction, light, be able to, you know, use lasers, holograms, uh, a concentrated laser can go from anywhere to 800 Celsius to, like, 2 billion Celsius, depending on, you know, what, what rays are using. He, he might be able to, you know, play with the uh, full range of the color spectrum. And maybe Odo will put like a one piece twist on it where like when he uses infrared, it works like the um Noro Noro beam or whatever it is, slow slow beam foxy that slows people down. And my you know, my logic behind that is the infrared uh infrared uh spectrum is has the slowest wavelength. So maybe like Oda can interpret it as like in, if he hits you with infrared light, you're slow. And then maybe X rays, he can be x-rays he could maybe use um uv rays like the sky is the limit my my i don't you know what would be what would the reason be he can't move light speed maybe it's going to be maybe Oda's going to have some built-in nerfs where he can move light speed but it can only be in a, a certain direction or he can move light speed but he has to charge up he has to power up it's just so crazy like what his abilities could do he could be able to use photons he might be able to use plasma like the skies the sky is the limit when it comes to Kazaru's Power. However, we have literally just been shown, you know, holograms here. We've been shown uh, light capturing gloves that can, you know, handle and manipulate holograms and light and stuff. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, uh, Vegapunk does have countermeasures for Kazaru's ability, especially since it seems like it's been the main one he's worked with the most. All the pacifists that have laser technology that was based on Kazaru's lasers. So, who knows? All I know is I really would hate for my Kazaru head height to just, you know, amount to nothing because, like I said, in my head, I just feel like he's been secretly, like, just chilling. He doesn't really have the, uh, what's the word, craving, uh, craving for power. He didn't have a, I feel like he never, he didn't compete with like, Aokiji and Akainu because he didn't want to be so like I just want to learn more about him. I want to know more about his background. I want to know how he became it, why he is so slow despite having the fastest Delvru. Like I am super, super intrigued and I just want to get to that. Oh, by the way, something I totally forgot to mention in this review. He can grow organoids. Are you kidding me? So apparently he can like grow like living organs. So you know the potential for like uh transplants and, and such and things like that, like Jesus, Vegapunk. But anyway, I'm going to leave this review here today. I know it was kind of short. I know it was kind of all over the place. I'm sorry. But like, oh, I have really hard times reviewing setup chapters unless there's something specifically being set up that I want to talk about. So other than that, yeah.
chapter. Um, not a bad chapter. Just you know, like I said, for me, it's setup chapters are best enjoyed. I want to say in a binge read when the thing it's set you can read the setup chapter and then get to it. That's my personal opinion. Anyway, thank you guys so much. I really hope you enjoyed the review. I promise my other ones, I'm a lot more energetic. I'm a little tired, and I I, I put a lot, a lot more effort into, like, all the details of the chapter. Didn't quite get to that this time around, but I'll make it up to you guys, I promise. Okay, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this video. Uh, let me know what you would like to see. Let me know. If you were like, hey, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. There's, like, so much here, and I just missed it all. Let me know if I'm slacking. Call me out. Like I'm trying to. I'm a fan just like you at the end of the day. So like, if there's any information you guys have that you can share with me, let me know. Also, do you think I there's any like merit to my uh, theory that you know the uh, diamonds that Nami has acquired is going to be reinvested in Raw Hat Crew? And if it is, what do you think they're gonna get? Also, I forgot to mention it, but Love has a bubble gun. So once again. Um, I saw some people thinking that the bubble that uh, the Mark 3s made were just from Kuma's pawpaw fruit, but uh, I didn't have that impression at all, and I'm glad that it's being clarified here. It seems like it's definitely from the mangrove. Anyway, take care. Have a great weekend. Bye! <laughs>